Good evening. Welcome to the May 1st Board of Education meeting. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Pursuant to the General Provisions Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move we go into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or, official, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to the negotiations, to consult with counsel, and to perform an administrative function. Do I have a second? Okay. We have a motion and a second going to close session. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're moving in closed session. We'll be back at 6 p.m. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education May 1st general meeting. Like everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain in silence for our troops at home and abroad. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? So moved. Do I have a second? Okay. A motion to second to approve our agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Sorry if this is right. Oh, sorry, Ms. Wright. Okay. We're doing all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. You guys have it. You guys have it's it. Scary. I'd like to approve the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes for April 3rd, 10th, and 17th? Closed and open? Yes, closed and open. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second to approve the agenda is closed and open from April 3rd, 10th, and 17th. Mrs. Wright? The minutes. The minutes. Okay. Mrs. Wright? Aye. Yes. 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 I have four in the information. Okay, Mr. Cook. Some of the good things, recognitions. Oh, we have plenty, so please join me up front. That's awesome. Good evening, everyone. We have plenty of recognitions this evening, so I'm so glad to see you all here to celebrate these folks. So, right now we're going to start with a very special recognition. And this is for our Hero Award. Uh, this year, Sutlersville Elementary School recognizes fifth grader Caroline Winterstein. She is a two-time Future Chefs Champion in Queen Anne's County's Regional Finalist in 2019. Uh, her healthy Mexican recipe for stuffed, I'm going to have to help you, you're going to have to help me say it, Bello? Belijo, Belijo's made her a regional finalist in the Mid-Atlantic, making her 40 of over 2,000 contestants. So please join me in recognizing Caroline Winterstein. Come forward, Caroline. And who do you have with you? My mother. Your and, mom. And Mr. Bruce. And Mr. Bruce Ford Gray. All right. So this is for you, Caroline. A certificate. And we have a Denny's card for you and <laughs> as if she needs Denny's because I want to tell you we ate we ate her recipe tonight for dinner and it was delicious as delicious as it was the very first time we had it a couple of a month or so ago and I had the pleasure of being able to be in the kitchen with Caroline as she prepared her meal and she explained what she was doing she told us all about the ingredients and she did a fabulous fabulous job so congratulations Caroline <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. Our next um, recognition is the Energizer Bunny Award. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Chip Brittingham, Wayne, Wayne Humphreys, Mark Humphreys, please come forward. As you know, this award is sponsored by Bayview Financial, and we are so grateful for the partnership. Tonight's recipient of the Energizer Bunny Award is Mrs. Betsy Andrews. Miss Andrews, come on down. <laughs> This is a surprise. <laughs> Queen Anne's County Public Schools recently recognized our Outstanding Teacher of the Year finalists and staff at our annual gala. The behind-the-scenes engine driving this immensely complicated event is Miss Betsy Andrews. With the generous help of Ken, Kim Adams, Coral Ruth, and Renee Wolf, she basically put together what uh, she describes as a really, really big wedding. <laughs> she put together this year's submission forms for all of the year's honorees, as well as the intricate and very detailed process of nominations, confirmations, collecting and collating information, and then scheduling the reading of the written nominations and submissions and the interview process for the Teacher of the Year finalists. All of this, in addition to arranging the actual Chesapeake Bay Beach Club, coordinating the tickets, the food, the awards, and so many other things. Um, and as you can see, Mrs. Andrews is very is the very definition of someone who is energized and goes above and beyond. And all of this, in addition to her day job, because Ms. Andrews is Mr. Polinsky's executive assistant, so she has quite a bit on her plate. So we thank you for all that you did to help us organize the Teacher of the Year and Staff Gala. Congratulations. We're going to make sure that you get... Our next awards are the Difference Maker Awards. And this is, we're doing a little bit differently today. We have several folks that we'd like to recognize for the Different Makers Awards tonight. We're here to proudly recognize five outstanding high school visual, visual arts teachers as the Difference Makers. With Stephanie Zeiler, Timothy Goodger, from Queen Anne's County High School, along with Andrea Schulte and Maria Sage from Kent Island, please come forward. Now, I'd also like to say that we would have recognized Ms. Michelle Moyer this evening as well, uh, but she did have an emergency in her family. Her mom took ill, so please keep them all in your thoughts. So in April, the arts literally exploded in Queen Anne's County. Did anybody see the WBAL segment? Okay, good. You're watching good. So you know it is exploding. Um, and with the launching of Art Scene, with, which was back-to-back -back two professionally joined student art exhibitions held at both high schools organized by these five, or including Miss Moyer, art teachers, led by the department chairs at both high schools, Stephanie Zeiler and Michelle Moyer. Both shows included artwork ranging from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade with participation from all of the elementary and middle school feeders. I attended both shows and they were simply outstanding. Was anybody there? Anybody have a chance to go? Was it outstanding? It was absolutely professionally done and outstanding work. Our students and their teachers are certainly to be applauded. So let's give these five art teachers a huge round of applause. But wait, there's more. This year marked many historic firsts. From Ms. Zyler and Mr. Goodger's first ever state award winner at the House of Delegates to a clean sweep of awards at the Academy Museum show in Easton. Mrs. Zyler and Ms. Schulte's student artists also earned our district's first ever Scholastic Art Awards. And our art department chairs established our district's first ever National Arts Honor Society chapters. 
Queen Anne's County High School uh, National Arts Honor Society is sponsored by Ms. Zeiler, and Kent Islands is sponsored by Ms. Moyer, along with co-sponsor Mrs. Page. So once again, we congratulate you uh, for the difference that you make on a daily basis and for all of the art teachers in our district and their students who participated in art scene. The arts are definitely back on the map in Queen Anne's County, and we look forward to more outstanding art shows for many, many years to come. Thank you. Let me give you a couple of tokens of appreciation. The stage. And I'm going to ask if anybody has anybody here with you tonight. My art family. Our family. <laughs> yeah. So you got some principals here. Yes. So family, come on forward, including Mr. Shekhas, Mr. Mr. Harding, Mr. Bell. Yep. Ms. Huda family. Here. Come on. Mr. Harding is here. Yep. Come on, come on forward. Well done. Thank you. So we have another special award tonight, and I'm going to ask if Mr. Bell, our supervisor for art, uh, visual and performing arts and media and world and classical languages and a few other things, is here to present that. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Kane. Thank you, board members. We would like to give special recognition to our district's first ever Scholastic Art Award winners uh, in the history of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, so first would Hannah Claggett, Laura Gast, Caroline Hollibus, Teresa Sawyer, Carol Brown, and Melissa Gill, please come up to be honored. And Scholastic, to give you a little background on what these ladies have accomplished, it's the longest running and most prestigious recognition program for creative teams in grades 7 through 12 in the entire country. Its rich, notable alumni include Andy Warhol and John Baldessari, whose works have influenced the entire course of art history. The Scholastic Art and Writing Awards also has a list of notable alumni that is extensive and includes Richard Avedon, Truman Capote, Cy Twombly, Stephen King, Kay Walking Stick, Zach Posen, and Nick Cannon. So we are in some pretty elite company among those artists and writers. Now the goal of Scholastic Awards is to encourage teams to believe in themselves, no matter what your path ends up being. And this year, out of 340,000 works of art that were submitted across the country, these six students from both Ten Island High School and Queen Anne's County High School took 10 of those awards home. So congratulations on this monumental accomplishment. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Young ladies, did you bring anyone with you? So you can pass the mic and yes or no. If you did, say who you brought with you tonight. Our art teacher, Miss Seiler. Okay, so Miss Seiler, if you hear your name, come forward. Be nice and loud. Miss <laughs> Seiler. Um, my art teacher and my parents. Come on now. Um, my art teacher and my mom are here. Come on my now. art teacher and my mom's here. <laughs> my art teacher and my dad. Who the king? Mr. Polanski. Go back here, Behind 
And we have one more recognition tonight. Tonight we are honoring a National Board Certified Teacher. Queen Anne's County Public Schools is extremely proud to recognize Ms. Jennifer Osborne for achieving status in December of 2018 as a National Board Certified Teacher. Ms. Osborne, would you please come forward? <laughs> So Ms. Osborne has put in a tremendous amount of time, energy, and effort into the process, and we congratulate you certainly for your hard work. She began her teaching career with Queen Anne's County Public Schools in 2008 as a language arts teacher at Mattapique Middle School. In 2013, she transferred to Mattapique Elementary School as a reading specialist, where she continues in that role today. In December 2018, after a very rigorous three-year process, Ms. Osborne achieved National Board certification in the area of literacy, reading language arts, um, early and middle childhood. Ms. Osborne is one of 30 teachers in our school district who hold the rank of National Board certified teacher. Again, we congratulate you, Ms. Osborne, for your hard work, dedication, and continued commitment to the children and the community of Cornelius County. Thank you. And for those of you who may not know, the actual process is that we have a pinning ceremony. So she is being given a pin that recognizes her status, her achievement for National Board certification. May I pin you? <laughs> so Miss Osborne has some has a fan club tonight. I do an entourage. Um my parents, my boyfriend, and Mrs. Schreckengast. Please come forward. <laughs> May I offer just one more recognition? Tonight is the last board meeting for our student board members. 
And as I have been told, not that I'm counting, but somebody else is, uh, they have 19 days of school left. So we'd like to recognize Miss Arielle Miles and Marissa Teddy in her absence. She has tennis this evening. But we'd like to thank you. Thank you for your service on our school board, your thoughtful decision making, the care you took in ensuring that your information was prepared and ready to share with the public. Thank you for all that you've done. Now, we know that you are moving on to college, and you want to tell us where you're headed? Yes. I am heading down south. I'm going to North Carolina A&T State University, and I'll study social work. Excellent. Um, Thank you so much. Did you yes. Thank also you. for your hard work. Thank you. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, first thing we have is our board involvement. Um, I just, the main things that I attended were the commissioner's hearings and was really pleased to see all the, um, all the people that came in support of the superintendent's budget, both um, teachers, staff, parents. Um, it was, um, I think we got our point across to commissioners and we're hopeful that they will take that in mind when they make their decision. They're still going to um, accept any kind of letters or emails you all might, the public might want to send them. They are having a work session on May the 21st to talk about the additional monies they're going to give us, I hope. And, uh, and then by the 28th of May, they're, they're supposed to um, submit their make a decision on their final budget. They'll sign that up on May 28th. So there's still an opportunity to come to them and talk with them. You can come to that work session. They usually, I'm not sure on those, but they usually have public comment or at least as a minimum, please send in your uh, emails um, and letters to them to support the superintendent's budget, which I made a point of to them and which a lot of people did, that it's a, it's a lean, it's a good budget, it's what we need, and it's not um, stuffed with anything extra. It is what we need. So please support that budget. Does anyone else have something to add to involvement? I do. Okay. Um, I, as well, as attended the work session for Sudlersville, um, in addition to Captain Kelly and Dr. King and their staff. Um, and I also attended the 57th Annual Junior and Senior Allshore Band Concert at Queen Anne's County High School. They did a wonderful job, both groups, um, with only two days preparation. So it was amazing the sound that came out of those students. It was it was wonderful. It was a nice evening, Dr. Kane, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that. Um, and that's it for me. Yes, Karen, do you have anything to add? Okay. Dr. King. Absolutely. It has been a busy month. We started the month with our last superintendent advisory council meeting. So I met with students, I met with staff, and I met with parents. Uh, we took our students to Queen Anne's um, uh, Sports Center, and after they presented their projects, they worked on two projects. They worked on a school bus safety awareness project, as well as a uh, cessation of vaping uh, or drooling um, project. And they presented those projects, and you'll see some of the artwork from those uh, as we go along th throughout the rest of the school year. And then we had some fun, and we were able to play basketball and just have a good time to culminate our, our classes so, or our meetings. So it was a great time. Um, I met with uh, Howard. I sit on the Teacher Education Advisory Council for Howard University in an effort to work on um, increasing our diversity among our workforce. Uh, we also went on to um, have an interview with the Capital News Service. Some of you probably have seen um, on our website or in the news our work with the apprenticeship program. So we went over to Queen Anne's County High School and we met with, and Captain Kelly was uh, there and, and spoke on behalf of our school board. We met with that um, news agency and we were able to share some information about our students and looking forward to that work continuing as we move on through the school year. And next school year, I should say. Um, again, the All Shore Band concert was fabulous at Queen Anne's County High School. Went to Chesapeake College. I am now sitting on the Multicultural Advisory Committee for Chesapeake College and, and uh, have been introduced to the work that's going on there. More to come about that as we move forward. Uh, Agricultural Awareness Day was April 9th. Uh, 
Miss Morissette, she was there. She joined the fun, and, and we were able to hang out with some of our middle school students and learn all that we could about agriculture. We had art scene, as you know. We talked about that for both of our schools, for Queen Anne's County High School as well as Kent Island High School, and it was fabulously attended. We um, had the job fair, went to Howard University, took Miss Amber Wright, our, our dance teacher from uh, Kent Island High School, and we went to recruit teachers at Howard University. We, of course, had our three commissioners' budget hearings, and uh, they were um, hopefully fruitful. <laughs> we're looking for continued support in that area. On the 23rd, we recognized the National Honor Society students at Bridges Restaurant, and that was a great event, followed by a Midshore Community Foundation meeting with Mr. Paluski and myself that we attended up at Chesapeake College. On the 24th, I had one of the best experiences with our students. I traveled with ninth graders to Horn Point uh, for some environmental literacy. I've mentioned before that I sit as uh, co-chair for Superintendent's Environmental Education Collaborative, and we were able to put some of our learning to work out at Horn Point doing some water testing, so that was a great time. Uh, we had a uh, task force meeting. I sit on a State Department's task force meeting, and some interesting legislation is coming out of that for 2019, which references the fact that all of the schools, school districts in the state of Maryland will need to have some level of restorative practices in our policies and regulations procedures as uh, it goes for uh, disciplining students. We enjoyed, on the 29th this past week, the Bayside Conference Annual Senior Scholar Athlete Awards Banquet. I attended that at Chop Tank Elementary with Mr. Pender, and we recognized uh, male and female students from both of our high schools. They received awards and are doing great things as student athletes as they continue <coughs> their, uh, their education post Queen Anne's County. Um, and then we had, on yesterday... Uh, United Outdoor Bocce Championships. It was also the 10-year anniversary. We had that out at Washington College, and I was able to enjoy some bocce with some of our students from both of our high schools. We had five teams there, and our students did a great, great job. We came away with a gold place for Queen Anne's County High School and several other places. So it was just a great, great event on yesterday. The weather was great and uh, it was just fabulous. I can't say enough about it. I'd also like to recognize that today, actually, we recognize principals because it is principal recognition uh, day, and a few weeks ago it was assistant principals being recognized, and while I'm on a roll, next week we will recognize our school nurses. So it's been a, a great month, and we've got lots of recognitions, lots of things to be proud of in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. King. Mr. Paluski. Uh, Madam President, I, I certainly can't hold a candle to that. Um, <laughs> And it's great to have an active superintendent. Um, just to highlight a couple things that, that Dr. King didn't mention, <laughs> as many times I'm, I'm often with her, um, but just to draw light to uh, April was Teacher of the Year, uh, our gala, uh, Heather Eflin, as I know some of you attended, what a great event, um, just fabulous all the way around. Not only that, but recognizing a lot of our employees in a lot of different categories. I think that's always a wonderful uh, point in the year. Uh, we also had the opportunity to attend uh, Kent Island High School, their National Honor Society evening event. We mentioned the luncheon, but there was an evening event. And the last thing, uh, on April 25th, I had the great honor to attend Kent Island High School's uh, Prom Promise activities. And I'll tell you that they, the, the students did a wonderful job, but the speakers that we have in, uh, and also the Kent Island uh, Volunteer Fire Department does, does a wonderful job. And just want to you know, recognize those community members for supporting our students uh, during a critical time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Polisky. Student board member, last report. Oh, goodness, it's so bittersweet. <laughs> Um, so, first off, I'm Ariel Miles. I'm the student rep from Queen Anne's County High School. First off, prom will be held May 18th this year, and it will be in our courtyard. Last year, we were lucky and got to have an off-campus prom, but we'll be back on campus um, this year. Cap and gowns will be distributed during school on May 21st and 22nd during all lunches. May 21st at 6 p.m., the Spring Sports Awards Ceremony will be held in the auditorium. 
Senior Awards Night is May 22nd to announce scholarship recipients. Um, from 6 to 6.30 will be a reception, and the program will follow that. May 24th is the last day of school for seniors. Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> On May 29th, the seniors will return to Queen Anne's County High for a graduation rehearsal at 7.45 a.m. On May 29th, the seniors at Queen's County High School are hosting a baccalaureate service at 5.30 p.m., followed by a reception with free food and drinks. And for those who don't know what a baccalaureate service is, um, it's a non-denominational spiritual program to celebrate graduation, um, and it's an annual thing. We've been having it for quite a few years, um, and I'm excited to be on the planning committee for that. Um, so we're working really hard to plan a great baccalaureate this year. So anyone can come out free of charge, and that will be on the 29th. Um, graduation is set for May 30th at 7 p.m. in the stadium. Um, if it rains, it will be held in the gymnasium and auditorium. Thank you. Are you the countdown girl? 19 days. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Miles. Well done, and thank you for your service on ARC. Of community. course. Thank really you guys for having me. a great job. It's been a pleasure. You have. Um, and since uh, Ms. Ms. Teddy is not here, apparently she's involved in a big tennis match, um, which is, uh, I think we're ending and going toward the end of all the spring sports. Um, so I'll read her report. She sent in, sent in for us. Both Kent Island High and Queen Anne's County High National Honor Societies attended the annual senior luncheon at Bridges Restaurant on the 23rd with a visit from superintendent. Special thanks to the local fire departments, as was mentioned by Mr. Um, Paluski, for participating in their annual Prom Promise event last Thursday. They sent an important message to stay extra safe on prom night. Successful prom dance at Prospect Bay Country Club this previous Saturday. Do students danced the night away and had lots of fun. Shout out to the class of 2019 Student Government Association for putting together such an amazing night. The AP testing is going to be done May 6th through 17th. Senior class meeting on May 1st to discuss caps, gowns, and graduation. May 1st, Ken Island High School Band Music Showcase. May 6th to 10, Teacher Appreciation Week at Ken Island High. May 8th, Ken Island High Spring Concert. It's a performance by the band and chorus. May 10th, International Thespian Society Induction Ceremony. May 11th, Athletics Hall of Fame Dinner, inducting new class into their Hall of Fame. May 15th, Dance Showcase. Looks like she's competing with the superintendent on things that are coming up. <laughs> May 17th, Seniors Only Student of the Month Awards. May 20th, Yearbook Distribution. The 21st, Spring Sports Awards. The Senior Finals are May 23rd and 24th. May 24th, two social studies classes are going to tour historic sites in downtown Stevensville and the Kerwin House. And on May 29th, Senior Awards Night, and then she's got in big giant letters, May 31st, the big day graduation. So that's her report. So now public comment, please. We ask all speak speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Any comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Organizations have five minutes, individual three minutes. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item, an agenda item that is expected to appear in the future, or a matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. Those items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. It is not the proper venue to address specific student or employee personnel matters, especially those matters on appeal to the board. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or process processed through available channels. Citizen particip participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member resp responds to your questions at a later date. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you respect the board's re request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when offering your critique. First uh, person on here is Karen Fields. Good evening, everyone. I'm Good Karen evening. Fields. I'm president of the Queen Anne County <laughs> Education Association. I'm a middle school, sixth grade language arts teacher at Centerville Middle School. On behalf of QACEA and our negotiating teams, 
I would like to thank board members, Dr. Kane and Mr. Fister, for a successful bargaining process. We have a ratified tentative agree agreement for certified staff and are now in the process of ratifying the tentative agreement for all ESP units. This takes dedication from both sides of the table to bargain with transparency and in good faith. We are educators, speech therapists, psychologists, paraprofessionals, secretaries, custodians, maintenance staff, bus drivers, and nurses who come together as members of the Queen Anne's County Education Association to serve the best interest of our students and our profession. We are a union dedicated to making education in Queen Anne County the best it can be. To this end, we joined the Board of Education and union members across the state to rally in Annapolis because we know what our students need. The House, Senate, and the Governor agreed. Through our joint effort, funding was secured for supplemental pre-K, teacher salaries, special education, mental health, and struggling learners in the blueprint for Maryland's future. This funding was brought home to Queen Anne's County because this is how we move education forward. These dollars were not appropriated to maintain the status quo for students or for teachers. We hope we can count on your leadership to move forward together by fully funding the tentative agreements and continue working collaboratively to build the best possible schools in Queen Anne County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We don't usually speak after public comments, but I just want to thank you, Mrs. Fields, for working with us so closely, so collaboratively. Welcome. Next name is Julie George. Good evening, board members and Dr. Kane. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I wanted to come and tell you that my name is Julie George. I'm a school nurse. I work at Mattapique Middle School and the Ninth Grade Annex, and it's been my pleasure for many years to do so and to continue to do so. Uh, one of my favorite uh, morning catchphrases when I arrive is, have no fear, Julie's here. It is also one of my favorite um, quips that I use when I work on the um, educational support um, personnel's negotiation team. I am one of the members, and we have many here tonight, and I would like to introduce them to you um, so that you can also see them and get to know them. Our leader is Mr. Art Pippo. He's our UNICEF director. We also have in Unit 1, Vera Walski. She's a paraeducator from Stevensville Middle School, if you'll please stand when I mention you. Sammy Crosley works at Queen Anne's County High School. She works also for the alternative classroom as the instructor and as an early morning receptionist. Brenda Spence is not here tonight, but she's an administrative secretary from Kennard. Cora Ruth is an administrative secretary from the central office. Michelle Masseur is a school nurse from Kent Island High School. Um, and for Unit 2, we have with us tonight Mary Bordley. She's a custodian from Kent Island Elementary School. And um, we also have Sandy Squires, who is a county bus driver. We would like to thank you very much for your work um, in partnering with us to develop the tentative agreement. And we continue to count on your leadership as we move forward together and support fully funding the tentative agree agreement both for this fiscal year and for the next. Thank you again. Thank you. Stephanie Anthony. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just like Julie did, going to just introduce um, the negotiating team for certified staff, just so that you can see who they are. Um, but first, I should probably start. I apologize. My name is Stephanie Anthony, and I have a lot of eggs in the Queen Anne's County basket. So I'm a parent of two children that attend Centerville Elementary School. I'm a citizen of Queen Anne's County. I'm a third grade teacher at Kennard Elementary School. And I'm also the secretary of the Queen Anne's County Education Association. Um, so I'm going to introduce the Certified Bargaining Unit. All of these people have given a lot of their time to work towards a mutually agreed upon tentative contract. And when I call your name, if you'd please stand. Of course, we have our Chief Negotiator, Art Pippo. Stand up, Art. <laughs> <laughs> our Dean of Hamilton, who works at Anchor Points. Mike Kern from Centerville Middle School. 
Elaine McNeil from Queen Anne's County High School. We have Betsy Baer, who's a speech pathologist, and she's kind of everywhere, so. And then Mindy Ray, who is not here tonight, who works at Mattapique Elementary School. So we hope you can, we can count on your, your leadership to move forward together by fully funding our ratified tentative agreement. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Richard McNeil. Good evening, everybody. My name is Richard McNeil, and uh, in one category, I'm a president of the retired uh, school personnel group, but tonight I'm just a, a citizen for most of my comments. I'd like to uh, say some positive things about our school system and the leadership that's, that's taken us to where it is. You know, as you heard already tonight, there's a lot of things going on in May uh, for seniors, graduation, awards. Uh, we've already had recognitions of a lot of folks and teachers who are doing that. And one of the things that um, I'd like to just bring up, the Queen Anne's County Band just came back from their uh, spring festival in, um, in the town of Williamsburg, Virginia. And if you haven't heard, uh, the concert and symphonic band, they uh, received a superior rating for their performances. Uh, the marching band, excellent. And the symphonic band, as my understanding, got the highest score of all the bands that were there. Uh, so we had good things going on there. And uh, according to Eric, uh, right, the band leader, um, they received, uh, the Queen Anne's County received a, a disputed de uh at, at the uh, evening ceremony. So just like to shout out to them on and so forth. Um, if you haven't heard them, they're in concert tomorrow night. Um, and uh, I don't know about Ken Island High School, but I know theirs is coming up, I think, next week on that part. So I just wanted to say something about that. I'd also like to um, just say thanks to our coaches. Um, we have two wonderful high schools. Where we have great coaches and very competitive teams uh, all season. And, you know, to me that just shows the community support on those team members and the coaches who support those teams and, and guide them in the right direction. And if you look at most of the players, most of the players are athletic and academic. Uh, so they're working hard on both ends of that. And, and you know, that just doesn't happen. It, it, it comes about because of dedicated people in their school system. I'd also like to recognize and just make mention of the fact that Seniors at both high schools will be graduating in 19 days or give or, give or take some. Anyway, um, and many of those are going to be recognized in the next couple of weeks with uh, uh, awards. Uh, you just had the National Art Society Awards and so forth, and many of those will be receiving scholarships to go on and continue their education. That starts in kindergarten, as you all know. And we need to say a big thanks. In the gala, we did a lot of that. But thanks to our kindergarten teachers, our middle school teachers, and our high school teachers, and the leadership teams at each of those buildings who really encourage good education and good learning. And I know it starts up here, but it's really in the trenches at each building. And, you know, I know that right now, um, as I visit five schools, it's tough for me to get in because the next three weeks is testing, testing, and testing. AP testing at the high school and park testing at the middle and, and the elementary schools. And I know that's a lot of stress on those teachers and the students and parents as well. But, you know, we, we've done a lot of work to get those students to graduate. And those 12 years that they've been in our systems, have, you know, we, we've got to say thanks to the teachers and so forth on that. Um, from our organization, we are in the process of finalizing our scholarships uh, that we will be presenting to two individuals, one from each high school who will be continuing their education towards a, a teaching career. And we're looking forward to recognizing them at our uh, luncheon in June, but we will be announcing that prior to that. So uh, I'd just like to say that. So thank you very much. And again, thank you to the board for their efforts to put together a, a budget that is meaningful and, and supportive of what we need for our children in the schools. And, um, and that's, that's what it comes down to, the bottom line on that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Would anyone else like to speak? Thank you all for coming. Okay.
presentations, please. Okay, so we have two presentations this evening. We'll start with our special education staffing plan, and that will be followed by the Innovation Center update. Good evening, Dr. Kane, Mr. Kaluski, Madam President, and the board members. Um, I'd like to just, this is my first opportunity to present to the new board members, so it's, it is my honor and my pleasure to do so this evening. Um, tonight I am presenting to you the Special Education Staffing Plan for fiscal year 2020. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, go through the presentation that we have, and at the end, if you have any questions, please let me know. Oh, thanks. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> um, so the staffing plan tonight is aligned with Comar Regs. Um, in addition to that, MSDE produces an outline um, and a rubric for us to follow to ensure that we meet all of the specific needs that. Um, are mandated through Comar as well as any federal regulations. So it's our primary goal and mission to make sure that we are going to ensure the appropriate and adequate personnel and resources available to our students um, in an effort to maintain a free and appropriate public education for our students and as well to ensure that that is done in the least restrictive environment. So that's always our first and foremost the most important thing every time that we set out to do the work that we do. The first step of this process is to provide evidence um, to both yourselves as well as um, the Maryland State Department of Education that we have provided the opportunity for public input. Uh, one of those opportunities is being held today, and there is evidence of that in the written staffing plan that I have provided for you in your packet. Um, in addition to that, I uh, personally have reached out to several of our uh, teachers, our related service providers, as well as paraeducators to make sure that our staffing needs are aligned with the needs of our students in Queen Anne's County. I'm actually very pleased to say that we're, we're well ahead of where we were in this process last year. Um, we didn't present our staffing plan until June. Here we are in May, um, and we, will, we are really ahead of the game this year with our paraeducators and that we'll be able to really put that out a lot earlier so that we can staff with quality um, paraeducators, teachers, related service providers in the hopes that we'll be able to continue to, to provide that quality education and hopefully also retain those quality providers as well. Um, in addition to those pieces, I've also uh, met with our local CCAC and discussed our staffing needs there. They have provided feedback in terms of their opinions and um, just different points of feedback that they have received as, as members of the community. On this slide, you can see that we have net maintenance of effort in terms of our special education budget. Um, we continue to do that year in and year out. You'll see the uh, to be determined for FY 2020. Just We're just waiting for that final piece of information. Um, but we continue to meet the maintenance of effort, which is mandated by MSDE and the federal government. So on this slide, I've broken down... Um, this, this to me was very telling, um, and it was it was very helpful information when we look at where our money um, goes when it comes to related services. Just because this is an area of need for us, um, we typically need to couple this area with both um, contractual services as well as um, employees of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. They're all areas that are highly sought after. 
uh, to, to find those highly qualified personnel. Um, if you look at the blue and the red, both of those lines on the right-hand side of this bar graph are um, speech, and speech and language therapy. On the left are indirect services, and on the right are direct services. And you can see that when you put those two numbers together, the red direct line alone is close to 5,000 hours per year. Um, and we, we share that amongst our speech and language providers, um, and we have to even, at times, share them across schools. Um, so it, it really does go directly to our students, and our students really do benefit from these services. Um, in addition to the speech and language, you can see occupational therapy, physical therapy, counseling services is another one that we're seeing um, slowly creep up as as you know, we see our populations change in the classroom, um, and then orientation and mobility. <laughs> this slide is similar to the slide that I presented last year, uh, where you can see our population distributed by disability. Um, we continue to have a, a higher number of students with specific learning disabilities. Um, you know, there are a lot of different disabilities that can fall within that category, um, which does usually equate it being a larger category, with speech and language following behind closely, along with other health impaired. We have seen a decline in our number of special education students. Um, so, you know, that does show that we are making progress in our efforts because we're seeing fewer students falling in that special education category. Um, but we are still one of the largest on the shore. Um, so, you know, we still definitely have those needs out there to meet, and we want to continue to be able to, to provide that quality instruction. May I ask a question? Sure. You have on here development, after autism, development and then development. Is there two different kinds of development? Um, so there's developmental delay, uh, which is going to be the the larger of the two. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure why I have that teased out. I don't have this as a direct link, okay. but I can get that answer to you. Okay, there's, thank you. Off the top of my head, um, I don't know why that would be teased out unless, actually, I think what they did is it's three to five, and then um, once they get to school age, that's when they go into a new category. And they can only hold that, that label. Um, typically by age six, we're starting to move them out into a, a different <laughs> disability category. Um, developmental delay is it allows you to kind of avoid a more specific label. Um, and so you have that developmental delay label instead of one of the other ones. So, and these ages are all across the spectrum? The, the, yes. The, all the ones on the bottom, but those two they tease out again because there's that delineation between the school age population and like that preschool okay. population. Okay. That's what I was wondering if that included everybody. Okay, thank yep. you. What about the specific? Um, that's a pretty it's, high number there. What is that? In that's the specific learning disability. So with specific learning disability, you could have a disability in reading, writing, and or math. Um, in addition to that, your com your Dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia all fall under that same category. So it's very broad um, right now, which is why there are so many that fall into that category. When you get into the, some of the other ones, because it's so specific in terms of the, the eligibility criteria, it's harder to qualify for those. Um, so our staffing patterns, um, in, on page five of the text-based document that you have access to, um, this shows you the staffing patterns. We are not proposing any changes to those staffing patterns for the upcoming school year. Um, so in terms of our numbers for infants and toddlers, um, we're not proposing any changes. For example, we have two teachers that work within our infants and toddlers. Um, portion of, of special education, we have an infants and toddlers coordinator, um, and then we have a uh, parent coordinator that also works within that. We're not proposing any changes there. Um, Child Bind is served by one of our teacher specialists at the district level, um, so they it's not one specific person. We, mer we wear many hats. Um, and then in terms of the, the rest of the areas there, we're not proposing any changes.
For this slide, you can see that this is our participation in the least restrictive environment. Uh, we still fall well within what the state of Maryland mandates as acceptable. Um, you'll see for our last category there, the separate facilities, home, hospital, public, separate day. Those are our students that are still Queen Anne's County public school students, but they attend a different facility. So those are our non-public students that may need to go to a different school, either across the bridge or here on the shore, um, that require a different level of service that we're not able to provide. You can see that we're still under that 1%, um, so we're still well within the realm of what's expected. We are still also pro-inclusion. That's very much our, our battle cry. Um, so our percentage right now is 87.89%. Now again, this is somewhat lag data because this is as of October 1st of 2018. Um, but that's, that's where we want to be. We want to be around that 90% mark for our inclusion students. This is our continuum of care. So starting with the top, you have our infants and toddlers. These are for our, our, our smallest, our babies, um, birth to age three. These are our students that are on an individual family plan. Um, so they are not on an IEP. They have the option to stay on an IFSP up to age 10 and then transition over to an IEP, which then puts them in that school age population. Um, Child Find is for all of our students ages 3 to 21. These are for some of our students that may be out in the community that have not been identified and they can be referred by any number of people. And, and this is you know, very much a message that we want shared. Um, you know, a pediatrician can make a referral, a parent can make a referral, um, a teacher can make a referral. If they have a, a suspicion that there might be some, some difficulty or challenges, uh, we encourage them to make that referral so that we can make sure that we get to them as soon as possible, the earlier the better. The next piece on there are, are parentally placed private school students. These are for our students where parents have found and made their, their choice that they would like to um, explore other options besides the public school system. And we do have um, a partnership with them to provide speech services, and Child Find does reach them as well. Our special education preschool and pre-K programs, we currently have two programs, one at Ken Island Elementary School and one at Centerville Elementary School. Those serve our students that are ages three and four, um, and we are currently working on one of our grants. We will start in the 2019-2020 year with a three-year-old blended program, and we currently have a four-year-old blended program. Um, my team and I just went down to Worcester County to kind of look at their model pilot program uh, so that we are ready to go and hit the ground running as soon as September comes so that we can um, provide another level of that least restrictive option. The next um, area that you see on there is our Park D classroom. These are our, these are our self-contained classrooms for some of our students that have more significant delays either in the areas of cognition, communication, or adaptive and adaptive behavior. Um, we do currently have two classes at Ken Island Elementary School, one at Bayside Elementary School, one at Mattapeak and Centerville Middle School. We have one at Ken Island High School and two at Queen Anne's High School. In addition to, uh, we have a three to five at Kennard and we have a five <coughs> to eight at Sudlersville Middle School. And then um, we have our Peels program, which is our program for emotional and academic learning support. We currently have programs there at Graysonville Elementary School, Centerville Elementary School, and Queen Anne's County High School. And those are for students grades K to 12. Um, we do not have any students K, 1, or 2. Uh, we try to include them as much as possible. Um, and they're based on the schools that their, their programs are located. And then our last area there is our inclusion, and those are grades K through 12. Um, and, and that is your typical inclusion setting with co-taught classrooms. Um, we have fantastic paraeducators that provide additional academic behavioral support. Um, really kind of pushing them to be with their, their typically developing peers so that they have those great peer models to build off of. 
So in conclusion, we want our, our primary focus is to continue to provide that quality, inclusive programming for our, for our students. Um, we're going to continue to work collaboratively with all of our school-based administrators, um, the Department of Human Resources, to make sure that vacancies are posted um, and that they're filled expeditiously. Uh, we're going to continue to increase our system's capacity to provide related services um, in, in accordance with the students' IEPs. And then this slide speaks more specifically to our um, grant imperatives that we continue to work on uh, with our PATH program for our 18 to 21 population, uh, which we're actually very happy to hear. We've had several inquiries from fellow counties that would like to join us in that collaboration. Um, in, in all avenues there. So they're very excited about what we've been working on and what we've been doing, uh, which is a testament to that um, progress that we're making. We're also going to continue with that three-year-old blended program, which again is the blend of the, the students with IEPs as well as their typically developing peer models. Um, we're going to continue to work collaboratively with the CNI team to increase academic proficiency proficiency and access for students with disabilities. Um, and then from there, we're going to also continue on with the imperatives that we started this year, which is really looking at IEP development, specially designed instruction, really making sure that the quality of those two um, concepts are really being implemented with fidelity, because after all, that is the blueprint for, for learning for these, guy, these little guys. So we want to make sure that that's quality so that we can implement it with quality instruction as well. These are our um, contacts for our special education parent support. So we do have family partners with us. Um, and these are our names that any of our parents can access, contact if they have questions, if they need support, if they need help through the process, or if they just want someone to come to the meetings to sit by their side and know that they have someone in their corner. We're there to be in their corner as well, but it always helps to have another party sitting next to you to tell you, you know, I'm here for you as well. Questions for me? I know I went through that quickly. No, it's good. I, I am a little confused. On your conclusion slide, um, you're talking about 0.5 teacher position and a 0.6 teacher position. Those are positions that you have, right? You're not asking in your staffing for additional <coughs> positions? Those are grant positions, so they're funded by um, grants out of MSDE. They're the local imperative um, grants that we get through our pass-through funds. So it's not a local funding position. Okay, so your staffing request is not a staffing request. You're, it is not. Okay. So for your overall program, you don't have a staffing request for that? You are you feel like you're at the point where you should be? Is that what you said? So we're not making, we're not at this time, based on this staffing request, we're not making any additional requests for additional positions. Okay. We're, we're working with the positions that we currently have um, based pending budget approval. Well, there's, there's that extra caveat there, but based on this plan with what we have right now before us, we're not asking for anything additional. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you. Oh, I thought that was the end on the end. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. King. For the record, my name is Greg Kluski. I'm the Deputy Superintendent. And to here to provide a brief overview of our curriculum management audit. Uh, so the purpose this evening, twice a year, uh, we provide you with an update, usually once in the fall, winter, and then once in the spring, uh, which is all related to the 2016 curriculum management audit uh, that our district had gone through. And then we refer to the term as the Innovation Center, and that is really our organizational response of how we've organized ourselves internally into teams to carry out the recommendations and the deliverables of the curriculum management audit. 
This slide is simply just a reminder that we have been constantly in the process of aligning the organization. From the left, which are our, our current strategic plan uh, goals, you will see tonight, uh, as well as been spoken in work sessions, uh, that those indicators and goals are going to be changing. Um, in the next coming, beginning in 2020 through 2025. But this just simply is about aligning the system. So aligning from the district's goals uh, to how we're going to measure ourselves and how we organize our folks uh, to carry out the strategies and the work um, that we should see to be able to move those indicators forward. This slide, again, is just simply a reminder that all of us play a part in this work. Um, from the superintendent and getting direction from her, the executive team, uh, through our uh, administrators and supervisors, how we've organized our work. And we've also used the Innovation Center, not only one, to carry out the deliverables of the curriculum management audit, but we've used that structure, and you'll see that tonight, to where we've carried out uh, some priorities in the organization as a way to move work forward. You'll see that specifically tonight uh, um, specifically around the high school grading policy with uh, Innovation Center Team 3. And then you'll see there in, in the bottom right-hand corner is what we're doing tonight is uh, reporting to you as the board our progress, and then it is simply a, a complete feedback loop uh, as we monitor our work going forward. Finally, just a reminder, we've organized ourselves into five uh, curriculum management teams, and those are each one of the areas. Those came out of almost a year long listening to the organization, talk about pain points, talk about areas of focus, and then each one of those are going to present to you this evening a an update on their progress. So I'll start with team one. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Kluski. Dr. King, uh, board members, I, I'm excited really to be here. Scott, I was un, unable to make it at the last minute, but I told her I could give her a presentation. It would just be fine. Um, for our organizational effectiveness team, this is the at least the second time uh, this year we've been up here, or I've been up here. Here are a few deliverables we've been able to accomplish. I, I won't go through and lead, uh, read all of them, though uh, two of the things we're going to be focusing on tonight and really going to end with what I think is an exciting kind of topic is the aligning pieces at the end they're in bold. Um, so as Mr. Pluski mentioned there the strategic plan is what this is uh, focused around and so we we revamped kind of reprioritized the five goals that are within them and I'm going to cover that in a second so if we go there um, kind of our big deliverables now for uh, team one is we, we've rebranded, renamed the goals, and put descriptives under each one. Again, I, there's no need to go through each one of them uh, individually, but goal one is learning accountability results. Goal two, safety security. Uh, goal three, operational effectiveness. Goal four, human capital. Goal five, community partnership and engagement. Uh, really, a lot of the time that we've spent in discussion and work has been how to share the outcome of these goals, the progress of the goals, you know, our, our success rates with the community. And so really where I want to spend a couple of minutes, if I can, is if you look at the bottom of that slide, the strategic plan live. Um, AASA, which is, a, is the superintendent's um, association for the, uh, in which uh, Dr. Kane and Queen Anne's County are members, allows for us to, um, I'm going to show an example here as I talk, but allows for us at no charge to what the company says is tell our story. Now, this is a live example uh, of what our site, you know, could look like, would look like once we get it. Um, it is my understanding, Mr. Polsky, that we have taken the, the next step towards getting our own dashboard, as, as they call this. And so Queen Anne's County Public Schools, really in the very near future, we're going to start doing the work uh, late this school year into the summer, will have its own dashboard. And um, in many conversations with the kind of behind the scenes company that will run this, their mission is to allow districts around the country to tell their story with data, with success, and in areas where we need improvement. Um, so they run a relatively simple, uh, but very effective program. So the home tab, which is what we're on now, would allow Queen Anne's County to simply just give a quick overview of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, and we can, we can update that, uh, let, me, let me take a step back. How, how this works is we input all the data. Uh, so Josh Combs and I went through kind of a process making sure the privacy statements and everything else lined up. Really, there was not a need for them because this is data that we control. It's data that will, will go through 
uh, the superintendent's office and executive team before we put up there. Um, and it's going to be global data on how we're doing relative to the five goals within the strategic plan. So the home screen would tell Queen Anne's County's story. Then you would go to the indicators. Now, let's see. Indicators would simply be um, many different what they call district characteristics that we identify. Uh, and then the, as, a, as a community member, as a staff member, I would be able, and this isn't a fully developed site yet, but I would be able to click on how are we doing with technology, for example. If that is an indicator or if that's an indicator within our goal that we're interested in, we would click on, uh, you could click on that. And again, there's nothing here now, but we can populate that tab with many uh, subsets of that indicator. Uh, and then the final piece to this would be strategically, how are we doing? So we would input uh, data. It would allow us to look at strategies uh, within our goals uh, and really just get, get a good sense, and, and better yet, give a good sense to the community of how we're doing within our uh, five-year strategic plan. Um, so I'm excited because really this, this was probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks I thought we had to find a, a entity like this that we could start utilizing. Not only have we found one, it, it, it's free to start working with. And as we get into it, uh, if we need to further strengthen it, the, the company's right there with us. And I, you know, I'm sure it doesn't become free at that point, but uh, we can still make it uh, work for the county. So that's kind of our progress on uh, our organizational effectiveness team and really our work around the strategic uh, plan. Uh, 2020 to 2025. Any questions? I do have one. As far as the goals go, this program will show where we are in relation to meeting our goals. Is there, is there, is this going to develop into some kind of a comparison so that the public, when they're moving to a new community, they can go on here and see how Queen Anne's County does against, um, you know, or not? Is that not the Goal of the goal. I, and, and I'll let Dr. King jump in here. Well, it, it's not my understanding as far as our being able to compare ourselves maybe to other Eastern Shores. Is that other school districts in the state of Maryland? Is that your right. is that your question? Because I can see it leading to something like that. Well, we certainly could use some mm. of the data to do that, but this platform really is about showing what our strategic plan is about and yes. our progress, Queen Anne's County Public Schools, in relationship to our goals that we've set for ourselves. If you, if you saw the indicators <laughs> tab and then the strategies tab, you saw that we'd put there goals go. there. We'd say what our strategies are, what strategies that we're using in order to meet those goals. And then that indicators page that we're, is showing right now would show what that data looked like. Um, and so this is really about Queen Anne's County Public Schools. But didn't your, your committee back in the beginning, though, develop those indicators, right, that led to... Uh, absolutely. Okay. That's we right. have a whole set of uh, indicators that, that we've worked on for the better part of a year, um, and those have been vetted through the executive team in each department, and then what will happen is that's what will get populated here. In addition to, uh, as you can see when Dan had, had rolled up, you know, at, to your point, Captain Kelly, as a parent coming in, this is a very, very quick snapshot, very quickly, a lot of information about our school district per what the superintendent said, you know, at, you know, our enrollment, how many schools we have, that kind of stuff, that kind of fun, fun fact kind of district, all the way down to these are our five goals, these are what we're going to measure ourselves on, and then here are the strategies that we're putting in place to move those indicators of those goals. And recall the Maryland report card, if right. we're talking about park scores and, and state testing scores, that helps to give families and, and anybody in the public an idea of how we compare against other schools in the state. So that right. platform would allow for that. I was thinking that. I wonder if they were working together and maybe there's some way you can incorporate those indicators kind of linked to well, eventually a link to what this, the report card says. These indicators particularly are drilled down specific to our school district. So some of our scores, our park scores, would be on that indicators page. So absolutely. But what we do is once the platform is developed, we create a link so that you can click on and go right to our Maryland report card. Right. Okay. And remember, Maryland report cards are by school, yes. individual schools, not by, not by the district. But that's valuable to absolutely, parents. absolutely. Okay, great. When you have time, Mr. Pluski, I would love to know about this eChris system, how it how it's disseminated. If anybody else uses it, how it's funded. I just no, I don't want to take up the time here. 
What, um, uh, say the first part of that. Chris is who puts this oh, yes. together. Mm -hmm. yes. To AASA. Yes. Okay. And then, if you mm -hmm. don't mind, yeah. just not not now. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? No. Thank oh, you. Great. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. There you go. Jump. And Miss Becky Tubman. Yes. Good evening. My name is Becky Tubman, and I am the teacher specialist at Kent Island Elementary School. I also serve in the role of process manager for the early learning and school readiness team. I apologize for my scratchy voice. I am fighting laryngitis, so I hope that you can still hear me. Unfortunately, Ms. Robert, who is our project manager, had another commitment this evening, but I would like to extend thanks to her for the great job she has done in leading this team as the project manager. She has been very dedicated to early childhood and improving it in Queen Anne's County, and it is very much appreciated. So we have um, two main deliverables. The first is com community partnerships and family support. Within this, we are, have a goal to create and implement prior care stakeholder professional development based upon the KRA domains. There are four domains for KRA. They are social foundations, language and literacy, mathematics, physical well-being, and motor development. And we have had 40 participants who have participated in this professional development. The PD was developed by our very own pre-K teachers and also by some of the various specialists within the county. And this is truly helping us to build a partnership with all of our prior care stakeholders. We also are working to increase membership for the Early Childhood Advisory Council. And the, if you're not familiar with the Early Childhood Advisory Council, this is comprised of early childhood educators, policy makers, and community advocates from around the state. And we have increased the membership in Queen Anne's County slightly, but we still have room to grow. There is a small grant that is now available to help support this group, and we have applied for the grant, and we hope to use the grant to advertise and recruit more stakeholders. We also have the deliverable of school management of early childhood, and within this, we have some main goals, such as creating an oral language assessment um, for pre-K for our four-year-olds. We were able to do this um, through the Strivers Reading Grant. It has been very helpful. And we have actually had our reading specialists and pre-K teachers already work together to create this assessment. And it will be administered in May. So that is a huge accomplishment. We are also working towards local assessment revisions. We have June curriculum building with the support of K-1 and 2 teachers, and we will be revising assessments by adding more writing. We are also working to best utilize our KRA data. This is our kindergarten readiness assessment, and we are working with teachers and principals to learn how to best utilize the KRA data. And then last, we have the Kerwin expectations. And we are beginning to look at pre-K expansion options so that all of our four-year-olds, four regardless of their income, have an opportunity to enroll in a full-day program. It looks like I skipped the key accomplishments. So I'll quickly go through those. That's the prior care professional development. That is also the kindergarten information nights for families that we have held this year. During those evenings, we had families um, attend, and they were introduced to the importance of attendance, sleep, KRA, and the registration process. We also 
have implemented parent resources for their child's first school age experience. During our registration last month, we provided an early childhood resource guide to all families. And in this guide, we offer contact information for early childhood education, child care resources, health care, dental care, mental health, health care coverage, library information, local management board information, contact information for the Board of Education, for special education within the county, and for Queen Anne's County Department of Health and Human Services, and then also for summer camps, and then there are some other um, areas such as the care center, which is child abuse response and evaluation, the local care, Queen Anne's County team, um, MSDE, and then the Maryland Department of Juvenile Services. <laughs> that way, whether a child qualifies for, for pre-K or not, they still have access to the many resources that we offer in the county. And if they are able to attend in Queen Anne's County for pre-K, they have the resources before they even start school since they were given last month. And then also our incoming kindergarten students received this resource guide. So we were very pleased to develop that and be able to offer it. And then last, of course, is the oral language assessment that I spoke of for our four-year-olds. So we are very proud of our work, and we look forward to continuing to work towards the future of Queen Anne County Public Schools, which is our early childhood students. How do you, how do you did you disseminate that? Because there, how did you get that information out? Or, um... The the resource guide right, is that what you're, right. So for registration, um, all of the schools have pre K and kindergarten registration, and when families come and attend. They're given the resource guide, but we also are looking to put it on all of the school websites and the county website. Okay, I was going to recommend that because I know when I came, I didn't, I didn't even know that I could go get a pre-K. So yes, absolutely. So that's something that we are working on by having all of our pre-K and kindergarten registration information on the Queen Anne's County website, okay. and then also looking to offer the resource guide electronically, not just by paper at, when they attend. But that push has only been in the last couple of years, though, correct? I mean, the big, I mean, putting it out in such, you know. Yes, like, we've never offered detail. the resource guide like we, yeah, like we right. did this year. That's something new. It's uh, awesome. Great. I've, had, I've had some people and parents who have come back and said how, how it was easily accessible, and they, you know, were grateful that it was there. Oh, that's wonderful. We like to hear that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Dr. Kane, Mr. Kaluski, and board members. Uh, for the record, my name is Rob Watkins, Supervisor of Mathematics. I also serve as Project Manager for Innovation Center Team 3, Curriculum Instructional Tools and Assessment. Good evening. I'm Bridget Passan, English Language Arts Supervisor for Intermediate Through High and the Process Manager for Innovation Team 3. So we're here to talk to you tonight about two deliverables. Um, one that we delivered in the fall and have used all year uh, as both uh, supervisors and administrators and on superintendent uh, monitoring visits to gather feedback aligned to four major pieces of instruction, alignment, engagement, equity, and feedback. Um, I can report that about a week ago at our uh, bi-weekly CNI meeting, we were able to have a really rich conversation as content supervisors about all the wonderful things we're seeing aligned to these. Um, in particular, um, respectful interactions among our teachers uh, and students and between students. Uh, increased student voice and student student discourse um, and standards-based objectives that are guiding our learning. Um, we've all, we're also been able to determine some next steps for what we'd like to do instructionally as, a, as content supervisors next year to better support our teachers and our schools. Um, so we found that this project monitoring, monitoring tool really lived up to its value um, and we're getting a return on, on the investment of, of this deliverable. Um, we look forward to sharing out with you what we see next year and what we offer support on. Uh, tonight we are proud to um, offer to you the project that we have had the most focus on this year. 
Um, for the better part of this year, we have collected practices, documents, and perspectives leading to the development and delivery of a high school grading and reporting policy and regulations. Uh, this was required uh, due to a recently passed uh, Comar adjustment by MSD in December, and, and this uh, policy and regulation will bring us in compliance with that, uh, that need. Um, really, um, this we really worked to create transparency and consistency amongst high school grading and reporting practices. <coughs> and uh, really, this, this policy reflects um, our current practices, improvements, and consistencies of grading, reporting, student transcripting, high, uh, grade change processing, and uh, grade appeal process. Uh, we look forward to bringing this back to you guys later tonight. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm neither Jackie Wilhelm or Carrie Mitten. Neither were able to be here tonight. Um, but I am Kayleen Kovach. I'm an assistant principal at Mattapique Middle. And I am also a part of the Innovation Center Team 4 for the Leadership and Professional Development. So, do I, do I do this? Do I make the change? I got you. Oh, I got it. Okay. I okay. So we have... Um, we have really had the pleasure of working with the observation and evaluation platform this year, which we're very happy to say that it's been up and running from the beginning of the year with observations and mid-year evaluations. And we've been, everyone is trained up front, teachers included, on how to get in and do their part to acknowledge the um, observations and evaluations as they come. Um, and Miss Debbie Terry is phenomenal. She is at our beck and call. Um, does a great job with being able to troubleshoot and help us out, and she is so timely in uh, responding to our needs. And so throughout the year, we've gotten lots of positive feedback about the new observation system, and I'm also pleased to report that now, as we're close, close to the end of the school year, we are um, done, and the implementation of the end-of-year evaluation is, and the student growth part is ready to go, and uh, individually, again, Miss Debbie Terry has trained all the principals individually on that. So um, we're ready to roll for the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then um, that's been kind of the what I just spoke about was has been the the biggest priority for this team. But we also are in charge of revising our faculty advisory handbook. So that is in process. It's last revised back in 1989. But what we're looking at is surveying other uh, FAC, which is in part of a negotiated agreement, and it's in every school, and um, getting together what the other practices are so we can revise that handbook and be ready to roll on that. Um, also, the development of the comprehension, uh, comprehensive professional development plan. Um, so part of that is the policy and also a handbook. Um, so again, it's, we need to address all of the stakeholders' needs as far as professional development. And to do that, we're researching what other districts and um, through other districts and MSDE resources. Um, and the last part of what we're working on is the professional development calendar. And that will be ready to roll as soon as the calendar is approved. Thank you. Okay, any questions? All right, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am the last of our Innovation Center teams. Uh, my name is Kevin Kintop. I'm the program director at Anchor Points Academy, and I am currently the project manager for Team 5. Uh, I will start off with just a bit of humor because last year I was the connector and for circumstances outside of my control I was asked to take over as the process manager and then very recently circumstances out of my control I was asked to take over as program, I mean project manager. So um, I'm going to share with you some of the things that we've been doing at in Innovation Center 5, uh, monitoring progress and performance. So over the last three years these are things we have went over with you before about um, the More Learning Less Testing Act. We've developed and implemented procedures for revising assessments and creating assessments. 
Uh, we talked to you previously about uh, compiling all of the interventions that we currently have in, in the system. And the last time we talked, we had recently finished up the development uh, um, and implementation of a rubric for approving new interventions and also uh, an evaluation rubric for we can actually determine the effectiveness of the ones that we're using now. So that's, that's where we are. One of the interesting things about our innovation center team is there's not a lot of revising of things that's happening on our team. It's a lot of creating and finding and making things. So um, two of the big or some of the, the big deliverables that we have going on now um, first is an early warning system. Uh, this is something that um, Dr. Kane had brought to us to uh, look into. And essentially, what we've been doing with that is we've been looking at the current options that we use within our systems to determine if kids are potentially at risk for things. We're looking to see what uh, data we have, what uh, systems we have in place. We've been talking to the high schools, the middle schools, the elementary schools to see how they do this type of thing so that we can come up with a more system-wide way of making this happen. Uh, when we did this, we met with PowerSchool, who is one of our largest vendors that has a lot of our data storage in it. Um, and they presented to us what's called the PowerPack. And it's a, it's a way to, in our PowerSchool system, for us to have an early warning system so we can identify kids on it. Um, after meeting with them, the cost of that was a little significant for us to just jump right into. Um, but we came out with a great next step for us out of that before jumping into the power pack and that was something called the power school ecosystem assessment and review and what power school was willing to do is they were willing to come out with one of their experts and it just came out yesterday as a matter of fact and met with members of the system that use power school anywhere from teachers secretaries central office superintendents board members <coughs> whoever's using power school and basically tell us and ask us questions so that he can give us a report to tell us how we are utilizing our system. There are a lot of things that we have access to that we may not be utilizing to our best of our ability. And this may help in our early warning system needs. So he's going to provide us with a report for the whole system, free of charge. This was something that he came out and do, uh, did. And I will tell you, I was in the first group that met with him yesterday. It's uh, now a little after 8. He was a little late getting here in the morning. But 8 o'clock yesterday morning. And almost every person at the table, when, when we were asked, what is our greatest need, he answered by saying, have you ever used this in power school? And we would say, no, what is that? And he's like, I will show you and I'll write that up so you guys know how to access this. So there's a lot of pieces of power school that are going to be helpful to us off of this. Would this help going as children matriculate between different schools. Yes. That was even part of the concern at our meeting was how do we see kids even coming from up and Mad Peak yeah. Middle going upstairs to the annex. I mean we found cracks in the system. We've seen it yeah. time and time again and th this would facilitate that. It, it, it would. And there, are back, report, I mean. there are reports and things that he showed us that will allow us to see um, across the system, not just in a particular building where we are. Right. Oh, that's awesome. What do you mean by warning? Warning. Basically, we're trying to identify students who may be at risk of not being successful, whether it's through their attendance, their behavior, their academic strengths. Okay. So we're trying to set up a system so that it will flag for us quickly so we can intervene. Uh, and the, the object here is the earlier we know, the quicker we can get systems in place to help those individual kids. So that's what we're trying to put a, a system-wide way to identify. Oh, okay. Because I know the high school, you, you know, they, I mean, hopefully you had parents on that committee too because... High school pops in attendance right off the bat. That's for the advantage of a parent. So, I mean, it, you know, some of that does exist on the current power school. It does, school and that's why we being used. And it, it, it occurs in many other ways, too. That's what we're trying to It's happening in several different ways in different schools, okay. and we're trying to come up with a system-wide way to make it happen. The secondary schools have a lot more data available to them quickly than the elementary schools. So we're trying why to find a way. That? Uh, just because it is uh, things are in Power School or they are in um, Performance right. Matters, which is a program that's with Power School, um, and so a lot of our stuff goes in there. Things like even the grades in the elementary school level, because they're in a different type of grading structure and not the way that the secondary schools are with A's and percentages and so forth. Um, there, there's got to be a way that we can help them intervene earlier. Would this also help with IEPs? Do you think it would help identify them, or it would help, you know? Oh, I think that the special I think the special education department would love any information that we can get to on a child earlier, so That's that they I'm can saying. intervene earlier. I you absolutely know, believe. Instead so. of having to wait for the, the folder to show up, you know, here's the information. I mean, legally, there's a lot of things that are in the special education folder sure. that are part of that process. But right. as far as being able to intervene on students at a quicker pace right. throughout their career, this is what we're hoping to be able to do. Because I'm hearing nightmares about how you know it takes. 30 to 60 days to get a meeting, maybe it would, something like this might help. 
I'm going to defer that one to I, I Mrs. Know, Smith know. because I, there, are regula there are regulations Sorry. and laws with special ed. Anything to help the process? Um, the other two pieces we're working on is we're looking at, and we spoke to you about this, we haven't dove into this as much because we're still working in the early warning system, but, it, the system, but that's a cross-section data snapshot that we can use in our system a couple times a year. Um, the object here is maybe twice a year, maybe in the fall and in the early spring, to kind of look across the board at the system and see how we're doing, looking at academics, looking at attendance, looking at teacher data, looking at everything that we can to just get a picture a cross-section of the system to see what's going on so that we can intervene on those things if we see things happening. Um, not just specifically for a kid who's at risk, but just if there are systems in place or, or assessments that we have going or things that we know need to be revised or attended to earlier <coughs> instead of waiting till the summer to do those. So that is, that is on our plate. Um, We're currently starting the collection of the data by level. And then the last thing that is on our plate probably for the beginning of next year will be the creation of the policy and procedures um, for closing the achievement gap that we need to get in place. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. In a nutshell, the, just going to wrap it up with uh, with a conclusion. Uh, I think you can see, you know, certainly the value, uh, the work. Um, that has taken place in our organization to move our organization. And um, that doesn't happen without a dedicated team of people that are constantly focused on the work. And I, 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 I think I say this every time that I'm here, I can't thank these individuals enough. Uh, this, is, this is above and beyond the work that they do uh, on a regular basis. So we try to utilize our structures that we have, meeting structures and so forth, uh, to utilize that time. Uh, but I can't say enough about them and, and their work that are really helping to move this organization forward. Mr. Poliski, thank you, too, for overseeing all this. Um, My pleasure. But to them, yes, it's a lot of extra work. And I know I've seen all the individuals up here. And then after last, just about a month ago, we had a, the training session on, on each person and what their jobs are. And I don't even remember any of these being mentioned and what their current jobs are. And I was overwhelmed at the amount of work they do in their own jobs. So for all of you, and for the parents, they should know that individuals in the central office are, um, are doing a lot, just, just not out in the open to, for people to see. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> just like to echo both of your sentiments. Thank you to our team who is working so hard. And we know that you have a day job, but this is part of it. And, and as you can see, it is helping to move our district forward. So seriously, thank you so much. We could not get this done without you. OK, we have a break. Just spell and schedule, so we'll be back at uh, make it seven fifty five. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Next item on the agenda is the new textbooks for the thirty day review. Uh, Madam Superintendent, Ma Madam President, Superintendent Board, um, we would like to recommend the following textbooks for a thirty day review, including calculus, uh, AP calculus part AB and BC, and AP biology. Uh, as well as AP Chemistry. Um, all of these textbooks are nearing 20 years uh, old, so they're on our five-year adoption uh, cleanup. So uh, our recommendation is for you to approve. We have them here. Uh, they will go out for the public for 30 days for any public to review. We'll come back in 30 days and let you know if there had been any comments. Okay. So I do need a motion to move these out for the 30-day review. That's why it's an action item. So, so moved. Second. Okay. So I have a motion and a second to move uh, five books out for five textbooks out for 30-day review. Calculus, AP Calculus Part A B, AP Calculus Part B C, AP Biology, and AP Chemistry. All in favor, Mrs. Wright. Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay. Textbooks out for a thirty-day review. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, next item is a special education staffing plan. For everyone's interest, um, um, Jolene gave us a briefing on the the plan itself. The second um, attachment in your uh, board docs 
was uh, the format of the plan, which we approve every year. So she, as you might have read them, she did take bits and pieces of that to, to, to teach us what she's presenting to MSDE. So this is a, we need as action item to approve this plan. So I need a motion to approve the FY20 staffing plan. So moved. Okay, I have a motion and second to approve the FY20 staffing plan. All in favor, Mrs. Wright. Okay, your special education staffing plan is approved. Uh, next one is district calendars. I'm sorry, I could just covered it. Good evening, President Kelly and board members. For the record, of course, I'm Andrea Kane, and we're going to share just a little bit of information about the um, calendars that we're going to ask for approval, but wanted to share with you the results of the calendar survey. As we promised last month when you approved the change for the 1819 calendar, we had mentioned that we had put out a district survey uh, to get folks' opinion, our community's opinion, about whether or not we should uh, um, start school pre or post Labor Day. So this is just a very, very um, quick survey and um, it's going to impact future calendars. So we want to make sure that this was out for you. So of course the survey was over from April the 8th to April 24th and there were three simple questions. First was, would you like us just to leave the 1920 calendar as it is? The second was, do you prefer a pre-Labor Day calendar option? Uh, particularly we were looking for the 1921 and we also, since we do two years for our calendar approvals, it would impact the next one, the next year. And then, of course, the ongoing preference, whether it was to be to start school before or after Labor Day. I'd like to mention, though, that we had an overwhelming response for this one, probably because it was just three short questions. We had almost 1,700 responses, and that was, uh, that was great for us. So, of course, the response for the first question Overwhelmingly, about 72% of respondents wanted us to just leave the 1920 calendar as is. So we will continue with the start date after Labor Day. Or that is our proposal to you, let me put it that way. Um, and the second question referenced whether or not we moving forward if they would like a pre-Labor Day start. So it sort of broke it up. Do you want pre or do you want post? And overwhelmingly, folks, about 71% of the respondents said that they would like to have a post-Labor Day. They do not want pre-Labor Day start for the 1920 calendar. And the third question was in reference to future district calendars and whether or not our community would like to start before or after Labor Day. And overwhelmingly, once again, almost 67% of respondents would like to start after Labor Day. There were about 28% who wanted to start before Labor Day, and just about 5% of the respondents um, uh, really did not have a preference. So we're going to recommend for the 1920A after Labor Day start. And with that being said, I'm going to have Mr. Brown to go ahead and share with you the, um, the work of the calendar committee with regard to both the 1920 and the 2021 school calendars. Okay, first taking a look at the 2019-2020 calendar. This is the <coughs> calendar that is being recommended by the calendar committee. It is very similar to, to the current calendar uh, with a couple of exceptions. Uh, and, and actually, this is very almost identical to what was approved last year uh, for the 1920 calendar. It is a post-Labor Day start. It has our traditional holidays uh, with the addition of a primary election day on April 28th. And in order to get the school days in with a post Labor Day start and still ending by mid June, we did remove the convention day for the MSEA convention, which would usually have been on October 18th. 
So we did put a PD day there, the PD day that would normally fall on the Thursday before the convention. We moved to the convention day. And we also did away with the half day of school for the PSATs. After talking with the academic deans at both high schools, they would prefer a full day of school on the day of the PSAT uh, so that they're not rushing the kids through the test. So we did away with that half day. We actually moved that half day for the elementary schools to the end of the year and moved the professional day to the 18th. And then that extra day off that was the convention day is now the primary election day in the spring. So this total number of days stays the same. You know, we do have 183 days built into the calendar, so that represents three snow days. And there are nine professional days for the teachers. Uh, five of them before the start of school and the four that, that happen within the school year. Our recommendation is if additional snow days are, are required beyond the three in the calendar, that we would make them up on the week of June 15th through the 19th. Now, would you clarify then the, the half day, you the half day was for PSATs, we you turned it into a full day. I mean, that doesn't change anything on the It is a full day days. of school. It does not change Correct. the number of days because a half day is considered Same. a full day of attendance for, by the state. My other question is the MSEA day, you're saying we're not going to have that as a day off? It will not be a day so off. So won't we be bombarded with requests for substitutes? I mean, It is now a professional day. So we okay, that, professional. We moved that professional day. And you're allowing that as a so professional. So that would be a decision <coughs> then to to make whether we would allow them to take that professional day to go to the convention, which seems a logical sure. choice. Yeah. I mean, it's for professional development, and that is certainly professional development. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone have any more questions on that? We'll take them one calendar at a time. Any more questions on that? So I need a motion to approve. The, oh, wait, the, I, I, hang on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just wondering. There's a lot of school days now. I mean, there's no breaks. February and March are going to be, I hate the word to use, fallacious, but that's what it looks like. I'm, look, I'm with, thinking of the students. With Easter falling in April, March yeah. becomes a long month. Yeah, it, it, February and March are going to be, February's going to feel like 50 days instead of half. Um, and that January, uh, we're splitting up that Friday and that Monday. Instead of just making those two days on Thursday and Friday, Correct. Teach professional half day. Why would? Because aren't those usually test testing days? Those would be school? final exam days at the high school. Yes, so the two days. The in reason red. for making it over a, a, a weekend. <coughs> we we don't want to cut the semester too short. So you know, again, we got to get ninety days in into the semester, and we really like to have ninety one days in there because we have three extra days. My only point is, if you made that extra. Vacate that extra testing day on Thursday and push those other two professional days to Monday and Tuesday. Families would take off Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday rather than you have a Monday in there where the elementary school is going to be going to school, correct? Correct. No. So that's to, to me that I don't know, maybe it's crazy, but I'm thinking the parents would like to have take a long weekend rather than have a school day in between. You're still keeping the number of days. Right here. Right, but that would shorten the semester. The semester would then end a day earlier. The semester would then end on the 24th of January. I'm a high school student, and I'm going to have to wait a whole weekend before I take the test on Monday. You want to, it, one, one, two of your exams would be Friday, two would be Monday. This is what the academic deans preferred. As oh, is that right? It's to, not the makeup. It's no, not the makeup the day. That is a regular exam day. Regular exam day. Okay. I, I would think they would love that. I would do a weekend focus study. On, <laughs> focus and I would not one at a time. <laughs> no, as I would it, not be wanting to have to study it, all weekend long. As and as it is, our, our second semester, our second quarter is only forty-three days. So you would now be shortening that to forty-two days. And so again, when you start playing around with these days, you start shifting end of marking periods, end of semesters, uh, end up getting one semester extremely long, the other extremely short. It, it, it really becomes a game with playing. I just feel sorry for the elementary the school other. parents who have to have a day in between on a Monday, and then they get two days off. 
I mean, child care is going to be a nightmare as it is. Well, you're only talking the high schools are, are half days. Well, I'm talking about the two PD days, the, the 28th days, and 29th. You're, you're... So that's the entire school system, correct? Right. The entire school system has, a, has those two PD days. What is it, the concern for elementary then? Well, because the kids have, the elementary school kids will have to go on Monday and then get two days off. If you make it a longer weekend for them all, you know, some parents would be able to go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and take a long weekend. I mean, right now, they're going to have to do Monday where they're going to have to. Yeah, I just, I'm thinking about, you know, parents too. So. So the, the concern, again, is the number of days for the marking period. So we want to be that. sure that we have. I, I, I do understand what you said about vacations and time off, but we do have to place the priority on instruction and assessments when we look at the calendar. Fine. Okay. Just bringing it up. So I need a motion to approve the FY, wait, the 2019-2020 calendar. As, as a member's designation. Um, I'll move to approve the calendar as the changes show. I have a second? Second. So I have a motion and a second to approve the calendar as presented. This is right. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. That was approved. Next calendar. Okay, the 2021 school year calendar. Despite popular opinion of wanting to start the school year after Labor Day, it just is not feasible in 2020. Labor Day is September 8th. If we want to finish by June 15th, there's 201 weekdays between September 8th and June 15th. If you take the holidays that MSDE says we're required to take, we subtract 15 days off that. That gives us 186 days between September 8th and June 15th. We have to have 187 to run a full calendar. That's your 183 days, 180 <coughs> days plus three snow days, plus your four professional days. It just doesn't fit in between September 8th and June 15th. And this is as late as Labor Day can fall. Mm -hmm. So our recommendation is at least for the 2021 school year, we start prior to Labor Day. Even with a, a pre-Labor Day start, this calendar looks remarkably like the one we just approved. You know, it, it, it falls and, and you know, Mrs. Harper's concern about that Monday and Friday is the exact same thing. It still falls uh, with a short first marking period, a little longer second marking period this time. But again, we still have that split, that 91 days in the first semester, 92 days for the second semester. And Easter's early and, April. Yeah, and, and the high school just doesn't want to go a 90-day first semester. You have that Friday and that Monday. And... You know, as it stands, should we need to use an additional day um, for snow, for weather, I'll inclement weather, we're into the week of June the 18th. Um, so as it stands, now if we backed it up to start after Labor Day, then we're going into the week of the 21st. 22nd, 23rd, if we use additional do snow days. So we'd be close to the end of June before we were able to dismiss students for the year. Um, wait a minute, I have a question. So the June 11th dismissal mm -hmm. as for the summer, as it shows up here, mm -hmm. that, is for, that, is for a, that is for a that, pre- that includes, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that has four so snow days four, built four. in. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so how are we into the 18th? If this? we started after Labor Day, yes, yes, we would be adding six that. days beyond that. But we're not into the next week because of Only that. if more than four snow days, days were used and okay. we started after okay. Labor Day. Right. Why do we have a half day off on June 4th? Uh, that's when elementary schools start working on their report cards and, and grades. They begin finalizing grades prior to that because when the kids leave the school on the last day of school, they are taking their report cards with them. 
second half days only for elementary and middle. I understand so, that. I was just yeah. wondering why it had to be a. Why and we do not a, we do not send the report cards in the mail at the end of the school year, uh, so they actually have to be grades have to be in and processed and ready to go home with the students on the last day. Okay, that was a concern brought up. Uh, last year, when you weren't on the board, by, or a couple years ago, by the teachers, they needed that extra time. Late and Memorial Day is late. Yes. That's another mm -hmm. issue. It's very, yeah, it's very interesting, Cal. Well, this is the leap year, too, correct? No. No, uh, next year is the leap year. The next school year. 2020. Okay. Well, I'm looking to um, um, approve this before Labor Day for that year, but but we have to always keep in mind that. The overwhelming majority is to start after Labor Day, and each year we'll need to see if we can put that in and make it reasonable. Well, this year. That's one of those decisions that you need to have to look at the, the calendar and where Labor Day Calendar's falls. Calendar is probably going to dictate decision. that. And but the, the, the effort would yes, always. To the point we can yeah. go back to the three, but until it works its right. way back, it's difficult and next to impossible, especially on the first go round, the It'll first be, year. 2022 as well. 2021, 22 is going to be it's the same. It's going to take a while to get yeah, back. Yeah, it will start it's working its way. way. It, it's going to be a while. It'll, it'll probably be a couple of years before you really want to start. You know, after Labor after Day. After Labor Day, mm -hmm. just because of the way the calendar falls. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, but my point is that we need to make sure the public knows we will go there if at all possible. We did okay. hear them, and we did really try to look at what they wanted, and it just pushed it so late into June when we would be finishing. Uh, even without any snow days, right. it just wasn't able. But to now go. the LEAs are allowed to make this decision on their own rather than having a state mandate. Yes, the local boards decide their calendars again. When it starts and when it ends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any more questions on this? So I need a motion to approve the FY 2021 calendar as presented. So moved. We have a motion and a second. This is right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item on our um, agenda is um, the external audit request for proposal, Mr. Fister. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Thank you, um, Dr. King, Captain Kelly, members of the board. Um, earlier this year, we were informed by our current auditors, BSC Group, um, that they would no longer be able to complete our annual external audit due to some staffing shortages. So we immediately began preparing an RFP to be issued um, to select a new audit firm. Um, this was a huge task in a short amount of time to undertake. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. J.C. Earls uh, for editing the RFP for publication and coordinating the entire RFP process. And I'd also like to thank Ms. Jennifer Boda, Mr. John Schreckengast, and Ms. Tony Schultz uh, for reading through eight of these lengthy proposals that we had um, and to score each one to determine the best choice of auditor for uh, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. The committee selected TGM Group LLC out of Salisbury because of their extensive knowledge of Maryland school system financial operations, their outstanding relationships with existing clients, including our own county government, and for their competitive pricing. With your approval, and we would move forward with audit preparation discussions with TGM Group, and also to inform MSD of your selection as required by state law. So on behalf of the superintendent, we recommend board approval of the RFP Evaluation Committee's recommendation to select TGM Group LLC of Salisbury, Maryland for year one of two twenty. Um, Year one of forty-four thousand and fifty dollars for a total five-year contract of two hundred and twenty-five thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, I were any of these um, accounting firms local? I mean, more like so county or so. Um, we had one from uh, Pennsylvania. We had one from Delaware. Um, TGM Group is local uh, to the Eastern Shore out of Salisbury, and a couple of them were like Columbia and the Western Shore. And so the scoring? So the, the technical scoring had uh, Clifton, Larson, Allen at the top with their technical scoring, but their price proposal, as you can see, was well above uh, the TGM Group. So the technical scoring, um, T 
TGM Group came in second with technical scoring, and they came in second with their pricing. The one that was lower with Barbara Kane Thornton was very low on the technical uh, score. Uh, there was no Maryland school system experience. Not saying they couldn't do it, but there's some, some comfort in knowing they've got Maryland school system experience. Uh, relationships with MSD are already on board, um, so there's a value to to that. And TGM has done work with our county government. The, our county government. They also uh, were recently awarded the bid in Kent County because Kent County was under the same uh, issue that we were with not with losing their auditor. Um, they do Caroline County. Um, Dorchester County, and I believe some on the lower shore, or the lower shore as well. Um, and again, I think the cost differential of not going with the lowest is well justified by the experience of this of this firm. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? So I need a motion to approve approve the recommendation to use TGM Group LLC of Salisbury, Maryland. For a five-year contract of $225,930 and an initial cost of $44,050 to perform the FY 2019 audit. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve this contract by TGM Group. This is right. Yes. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you, board members. And, and with this contract, we will now be able to audit some of the school books as well. Good. So, board members, um, Mr. Farley, we present the HR report. Yes, I would ask the board approve the HR report that was presented in closed session. I so moved. We have a motion and a second to approve the HR report as submitted in closed session. Mrs. Wright. Yes. 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 Okay. Chair report approved. Next item is policies for approval. These have been through their two reads. Tonight we are looking to approve all of them. Mr. Pluski or HR Director, any comments on the policies? No, there are ample. Mr. Pluski would affirm, but we had no comments during the entire comment period. Okay. Ms. Harley, did you? Did you have any other anything else to add? Okay, great. So I need a motion to approve the policies, uh, employee discipline number four four nine, and the subsequent regulation four four nine point one, student discipline five eleven and five eleven point one, school health five thirty one and five thirty one point one, sun sun safety five fifty three five fifty three point one. Education of Students with Disabilities, number 645 and 645.1. Discard County-Owned Books and Materials, number 614 and 614.1. And Substance Abuse, number 527 and the subsequent regulation of 527.1. So moved. I need a second. Um, there's one more, I'm sorry. Oops, one more. Thank you. And the Acceptable Use of Electronics, number 205 and 205.1. So moved. A motion is second for the approval of all of those policies and re their subsequent regulations. This is right. Yes. 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 Policies are approved. Great. Um, next item is field trip destination imagination. Mr. Peluski. Uh, Madam President, 8.07 field trip superintendent recommends. Uh, destination Imagination, which would be an overnight field trip, uh, May 21st to May 26th to Kansas City, Missouri for four Mattapique Middle School students, three of which are sixth graders, one of which is seventh grade, to compete at the Destination Imagination National Competition. Uh, attending with them uh, will be three adults, two of which are coaches. They're also parents. There will be one teacher. Um, and then there will also be two chaperones that will be attending as well. Uh, the, this field trip is funded by um, um, fundraisers. By fundraisers, excuse me. I don't know why I just forgot that. Uh, there was uh, I know 50. How that feels. <laughs> I'm sorry? I know how that feels. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. 
did turn 45 recently. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> baby. Baby. <laughs> okay, let, let's no get us excuse, back on man. track here. No excuse. <laughs> let's get us back on track. Uh, there was uh, $1,500 that had been raised prior uh, from the prior year. That money is, was used automatically up front, which is a $5,000 just in registration fee. So all the remainder funds uh, have been uh, fundraised. And that only includes for the four students, the three adults, which are the two coaches and the parents and the one teacher, the two chaperones will be paying on their own. Any other questions about this field trip? We need a motion to approve the field trip. Or uh, to destination imagination. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve this field trip from Mattapique Middle School to destination imagination. This is right. Yes. 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 Okay, great. Good luck to the, to the students. Next item is substitute bus drivers. Good evening, Madam President, board members, Dr. Kane. For the record, I'm only 25 years old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Baby. Just want to get that out of the way. Your nose is gross. <laughs> All right. I'm sick, of, I'm sick of approval tonight. Uh, Bud Light. Five <laughs> substitute bus drivers, uh, Christopher. Crosby, Martin Galley, Kenneth Hewitt, Ann Lane, and Wayne Powell, who have all met the requirements set forth by the Queen's County Public Schools. Okay, I have one question though. They're they're purchasing their new their buses. Their I was going to do that one separate. Separate. No, okay. This great. is just for substitutes. Got it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I need a motion to approve the substitute bus drivers as listed here. So moved. Second. Okay. A motion and second approved bus bus driver substitutes Christopher Crosby, Martin Gailey, Kenneth Hewitt, Ann Lane, and Wayne Pyle. Mrs. Wright. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the next one. Thank you very much. Bus. For the second item, I'm seeking approval for. Uh, Mr. Eric Hanzo to purchase a 2007 bus. Um, Mr. Wayne Powell, many of you know, has driven for many years, retired, and his bus actually has met the 15-year life cycle, like right now. All right, so usually they do them, um, you know, at the end of the summer, and it just kind of fell in that pattern. So Mr. Hanzo is seeking to have purchased a 2007 bus at the 2007 PVA. All right, so you can do that route for um, Mr. Pyle. Eric Hanzo is also seeking to purchase a bus in 2019-20 to replace bus 10409, which will then become a paid spare. As you remember, paid spares get $5,000 a year. That's what they're paid for. Um, they don't get the PVA for that. He has another bus that is a paid spare that will be rolling into that 15th year, so that's why he's requesting that. Miss um, Diane Kessinger is requesting to purchase a bus in 2019-20 uh, school year, and her bus number 6405 will be 15 years of age. So we're maximizing the amount of years we can get on. So uh, we're seeking approval of those three purchases. One will be for this year, <coughs> and then the other two are for next year. Why is Mrs. Kessinger asking for a used bus? It says on here to purchase a used bus. Mm -hmm. uh, a personal choice. Okay. I mean, I don't really want to get enough. Okay. No, I, <laughs> as long as it works. I yes, ma'am. It, it will have to meet all the state requirements. Okay, thank you. That. That's yeah. what I was getting at. Thank you. And it starts its first year now. Is that right? No matter how old it is? For the PVA? The PVA will start in 2000 uh, next year for that cycle. Right, but however old the bus is, she will bought. be for that year. It will not be for like the 2019. So if you have a bus that is, say, um, like Mr. Hanzo is looking for 2007, that's what the PVA is going to be for that that year. Okay. It's not going to be the full amount that is in the contract for okay. this upcoming year. Okay. So her used bus is that's where Same she way. starts her PVA. <coughs> okay. As I understand, the 15 year, just for the information, new folks, 15 year, it is a 12 year. But 
15 is a, a waivers up to 15 it was 12 years and then they passed legislation to allow us to have them up to 15 years oh, okay so if they can show that they are experiencing difficulties uh, fixing the buses after year 12 then we allow for them to purchase it you'll see that predominantly in the north section where there's more miles put on of the county put on buses okay thanks for the clarification yes, so I need a motion to approve Mr. Hanzo to purchase a 2007 bus and also to purchase a new bus for the 2019 school year and Ms. Kissinger to purchase a used bus for the 2019-20 school year. So moved. I need a second. Second. I have a motion and second for the purchase of those three buses. This is right. Yes. 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 I have one year for the purchase of the bus. Buses are approved. Um, next item is the break. Are you all okay? We're not going break. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had a long one. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the expenditure reports, Mr. Fister. Thank you, Captain Kelly and board members. Uh, before you, for information only, is the expenditure report on the month that ended yesterday. So. Um, it, We've put together, you know, the report as, as normally uh, shown. In conversations with Dr. Kane and myself, we decided we will not bring you a transfer report uh, or request to go to the county this month. We will do it next month so it can be comprehensive, combine everything that we know we have to fix this category of student transportation, but also will allow us uh, a little bit more time with projections for the end of the year. So we don't have to give you a partial one this year and then perhaps one, I mean this month, and then a, another partial one. Uh, in June, we'd like to wrap it all up in June. Um, so for this, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. But we'll be bringing you a transfer request for your approval and county commissioner's approval uh, at the June board meeting. We have sufficient time for oh June. That's yes. right. Okay. Yes. For June, Still yes. We'll, we'll have sufficient time. Okay. Any questions of Ms. Mr. Pister? Thank you, Mr. Right. Pister. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pfister, did you want to just uh, give the uh, board a heads up about how we want to present transfer reports moving forward for 1920? Yes, thank you. Um, in some of the discussion because of the agenda setting, um, we'd like to make the transfer request as, um, when, when we need to. That would be the categorical transfers that would require your approval, just like we've done in the past. What I'd like to do is institute the transfer notice as a standing monthly, as this expenditure report, you see it every month. I'd like to have an item on the agenda, transfer notice. We don't have to change it when we do or do not have one. Those are for the in-category transfers. And those months where we simply don't have them, then I will just report that we don't have any. But it would be a standing item on the agenda going forward with the new fiscal year, if the board uh, uh, would be amenable to that. So it's just a line item that says notice, and only will have anything going on based on what you need to go on. Yep. It'll sit there without a request unless you make a request. Right. So and in the action. Just for ours. You yep. still do the commissioners the same way. Mm -hmm. It's always done. Yep. But that could show up on right. transfer notice as an item. Which would be an, an action item. Place. Yes. Perfect. But for information item, it would be two standing items, the expenditure report and then a transfer report. And those months where none of the departments have moved money within funds. It'll still be there. It'll still be there. I'll just report there are none this month. Perfect. Okay. No Thank you, Dr. King. So it keeps us accustomed to looking for them. Yeah. So we always will have it on there. So you're not guessing, well, will we have one this month? Will we not? The item will be on there. If there is something to report, we'll report it. If not, we will say there is nothing to report. Right. Just and we right. need to have county our approval and the county commission approval that's just being extra yeah they will show up specifically on the months where we're requesting them for your approval but nothing really changes you're just adding it to yep. the agenda always as an yep. item there absolutely to use if needed we yes. need to include absolutely. that in the handbook well since we're and changing it we need to include that because it we, oh, lists our agenda okay just I like think we have our agenda broken down in yes it is yes it is it's in the handbook Okay. Every agenda item we ever have is in the right. Handbook. Every category for the category. So for action uh, and I just want to make it in there. Do we list them? I mean, I know we have action items and all that, but we list what they actually are. Uh, we'll look I'll at check. It. I'm just, I'm just we'll saying, good it. for you for I'll, thinking of I'll that. Check okay. that. But I didn't realize that. Is that new? 
Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll figure that. We'll see because we have I'll another check information I'll, items. I'll look at it. So in the we'll see. And, and again, we'll if we need to. just kudos to the staff that, that we've been working with over the year. As you notice, you've, you've only had one so far this year cross-categorical transfer. So the, the teams and the departments really are spending within their means that we don't have this um, need. And even within their in-category transfers, they're really honing in. So kudos to the team for, you know, making sure they're living within their means. Thank you. Thank you. Sister. Thank you. Okay, next item is policy for first reads. We have two policies that we want to put out for first read, high school grading and reporting policy number 629 and behavior threat assessment policy number 508. Those are future uh, action items. This would go out for first read. We don't need to have a motion about that. I just want to see if anyone have any concerns. Well, actually on here, I'm just looking up real fast. Okay. Are, are we going to be uh, having someone clean it up on the website? It's probably, it looks. I know that Mr. I, I know that Mr. Um, Watkins has spent additional time today working on it, so I'll we'll make sure everything's clean before it's put out. Okay. 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 Yeah, was, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Anybody else for a community um, public comment? Anyone out there in the audience? People. <laughs> okay. Next one is future meetings and events. There is an adjustment to this this category. We have a May 8th from 10 to 1 executive closed session. We're going to hold, we worked on that at the end of the closed session. Uh, May 15th, the school board work session. And May 15th, the 8th conversation on race, Kennard Cultural Heritage Center from 4 to 7. Uh, we have May 22nd, Queen Anne's County High School Senior Awards Night. And May 29th, Ken Island High School Senior Awards Night. Queen Anne's County commencement is on May 30th at 7, and May 31st is Ken Island High School's commencement. Uh, June 5th is a, our normal school board meeting, and June 19th is a, is a work session. Uh, we have some more um, meetings in there. We're going to be firming up for June and July. And we'll I put in, those out shortly. May I interject and just say that the May 15th and the June 19th work sessions are both from 11 to 2. 11 to 2, yes, are normal. And the May 8th, session. you already gave time for that one? It's 10, 10 to 1. 10 to 1. Okay. Stated that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Does anybody else have anything, anything else? else? Okay. So moved. Second. The motion is second to adjourn. This is right. Yes. 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 Okay, meetings adjourned. Thank you, Thank you all.